everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about the Acura Legend, and more specifically, some of the problems we've been dealing with with this car as of recent. Some of those problems we knew were likely going to crop up, and so we were prepared for them, but other challenges like faulty part and quality of parts, we weren't really prepared for, but let's go ahead and talk about those, so let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so we've got the Acura Legend here, and as you can see, it's mostly taken apart here in the front, and you may be saying, well, why are you draining the radiator? It seems like you're replacing the radiator. And if you are an observer and a, a frequent watcher of our videos, then you'll know that this was recently replaced. And recently replaced with what we thought was a high quality part. Come to find out, our issue is with the radiator itself. And just for people who are wondering, this is the Denso um, radiator. As you can see here, it's made in China. The original Denso manufacturing was done in Japan, but somewhere around 20, or let me correct myself, 2009, if I recall correctly, Denso was, was bought out by a Chinese-based company, and so they could no longer claim that it was made in China because they moved their manufacturing over to China. And hence why this radiator says made in China instead of if you're more familiar with the products coming out of Japan. But what is our issue and why are we replacing it? Well, simply put, we've got some leakage occurring right here at the crimping. So this is your top cap and this is your alumin, um, aluminum core for your radiator. And these two are sealed with a gasket in between. It is crimped and usually is pressure checked before it leaves the factory. Well... One of the issues that we had on our previous radiator was that it just aged out. And these seals do fail over time. And because they fail, they end up failing usually right here at the top cap or at the bottom cap. And so this crimping usually ends up leaking right around here. And that's what we experienced with this radiator. So a brand new radiator with, oh, I would say less than 100 miles on it was already failing. So that makes me concerned about the quality of parts that you can obtain today for these older cars. Well, since this was still under warranty, we went ahead and acquired another Denso radiator. But if that doesn't end up working, then we're gonna have to go ahead and remedy the situation in another fashion. While, yes, I can get a new radiator and have that replaced for free, um, what isn't free about the process is you have to drain the coolant, there's some transmission lines down there that need to be removed. Never mind the fact that if you were working with a shop and not a DIY, you would have to take this to a shop and have them do it. So for me, it's not that expensive, but you're going to pay the labor again to have this taken care of. So it's really a concern I have for part quality that's going on here. Additionally, we had our alternator go out. So it was just on a quick drive to the grocery store, exercising the car as I typically do. During my weekly drives, I pull one car out, take it out for a spin, put the other car back in, pull another car out. And so in that process, the battery light illuminated on the dash, and so we had to replace the alternator. Now, I won't be doing a video on the alternator because there's already a really good video out there. So if you follow the car apprentice, he has an Acura Legend, or had an Acura Legend, and did a really good video on replacing the alternator. The one thing I will say is when you rotate it 90 degrees, it's almost impossible to get that out safely and easily. So I ended up taking out the alternator bracket, this top bracket right here. There's three bolts that attach right there, and then there's one right there that you can see. That makes it a lot easier to get that alternator out. I struggled for a while before I ended up doing that. Once I did that, it was out in two seconds. So maybe a little bit of a struggle to get to those bolts, but overall an easier process and trying to rotate it 90 degrees and try to pull it out. So we're gonna go ahead and get that radiator going. We've got uh, new coolant. We've got our new radiator over there. It's the same radiator, like I said. Additionally, we're gonna do a video on rebuilding our alternator. So I prefer to have a backup alternator for any time that we go on long trips. So we're gonna do a video on how to rebuild your alternator. We've got it all cleaned up. That'll be a separate video about how we go through that and get that back 
working. So for right now, I'm not going to do anything more other than get this radiator replaced and go through the process of cleaning up everything and putting it back the way it was. Um, I'm doing a little separate process than what I showed in the video. I took all the cooling fans out. I wanted to give myself a little bit of working room, see if I could identify any other issues while I was in there. That way, if there's anything like a leaking hose or any problems with like the engine mounts in the front, or if there was an alternator issue that I didn't actually uh, address while I was in there. I wanted to make sure I did that. Really doing a full comprehensive check before we take this car further on any road trips. Uh, we might be taking this to Connecticut later in, I think it's August, early August. Don't know yet if that's going to happen. If it does, then obviously I will film that. But for right now, that's where we're at with the Acura Legend. So we'll go ahead and tidy this up and then hopefully get it back on the road here in a short bit. All right, so we've got the new radiator right there. We've got the old radiator right here. We've transferred everything over from the old radiator over to the new radiator. We've got the, the lower pipe or the lower hose installed. We've got our sensor right there for the cooling fans. We've got all our bolts right there for the cooling fans to hold on. Um, what we have to do is now reinstall it into this space. We've got our cooling hoses angled up so that the, I'm sorry, transmission hoses angled up so that they don't leak. We've got a little bit of leakage there from when we removed the radiator. That's okay. We've got to put our bracket back on for that lower hose. Not a problem. We'll go ahead and get that taken care of. Really simple job and that's where we're at right now. And so we have the car all put back together. We used a Lyle funnel to bleed out the air. That takes about 20 minutes or so to get all the air out. You saw a little bit of that in this video. And hopefully now our new Denso replacement radiator will last a long time. I did notice that it seems the crimping on this radiator is a little bit better. The tolerance is a little tighter than what was observed with the eye when I looked at the failure of our previous one. Maybe that's a good sign, maybe that's yet to be seen. But what I really wanted to do was highlight in this video the need to think outside of the box when it comes to sourcing parts for our cars like the Acura Legend where part availability is really hard and it's becoming smaller and smaller every passing month, every passing year. So what are we gonna do if our Denso radiator fails again? Well, it is under warranty, so I could go through the process of replacing it again and getting partial money back on this. However, I'm already researching alternative options that would lead me to maybe a repair shop where a skilled technician would take this radiator apart, find the failure point, and generate a solution. Now, certainly I could do that myself. It's not complicated, but the tool investment would obviously outweigh any benefit that I would have. So it's really about, can we think outside of the box again to get our problem solved? Maybe by not going with companies like Denso who shift from Japan manufacturing to China and clearly have quality issues. You know, like, like you know, we have done a number of things on this car and the Acura CL that were DIY. You know, our alternator rebuild comes to mind, our ABS pump reseal comes to mind. So these are things that we can do. It takes thinking outside of the box to solve our problems, but are we actually creating longevity by doing that ourselves? So something to think about. These cars are obviously 30 years old at this point and come with a bit of a maintenance. Um, so if you're looking to get into an Acura Legend, you also have to think about how much you're willing to spend to keep this car on the road. And if you're not willing to think outside of the box and create solutions that exist outside of part manufacturing, you may struggle. So it may cost a little bit more for us to have our radiator serviced by a technician in a radiator repair shop, but hopefully that solution lasts far longer than some of the issues we're seeing with sourcing parts 
um, through aftermarket manufacturing. So that's it for now. Hopefully you learned something. Uh, feel free to drop a comment down below or ask a question. Maybe I can have an outside-of-the-box solution for your problem, and we'll see you on the next one.